Hey folks, it's Dr. Rowe here. I'm just wanting to send a personal message out really. This is a reflection, which is why I've got the background behind me. I was trying to think of what kind of background I could put here for you to, to see whilst I'm speaking, but actually that's irrelevant. I guess the main thing I want to talk to you about, and at the moment there's a lot going on in the world and I'm becoming so aware, acutely aware of reactions in me to what's happening in the world, but also seeing the reactions in other people around me and, and even observing externally people that are reacting either in social media, but even in our families. And this is to do with what's happened over this last year with COVID. So uh, my personal feeling is at the moment, there are a lot of people that are living in such fear that they are not necessarily thinking about the consequences of their actions as a result of experience this fear. Meaning, for example, parents who maybe are not wanting to travel or go out, possibly cross borders, take flights, um, which of course is challenging based on your beliefs about what potentially could or couldn't happen. But even just um, going out into the world and living to such an extent that now I'm seeing rifts and families, I wouldn't say necessarily breaking up, but gaps falling between, forming between families. The whole experience with COVID has created huge polarity. I mean, if you agree with this, it'd be nice to see a comment here in the, you know, in the boxes, just to say what you feel about this. But my experience has been that if you have a, a specific view on the way it's been handled or the rules about mask, no mask, you know, vaccination, no vaccination. If you're in alignment with what the family believe, and this is happening in our family as well, by the way, but I've seen it in other people as well, then everything's fairly okay. The conversation is sort of a blurred, agreeable, yeah, this is how it is conversation. But if there's any polarity at all, I, well, actually, we don't believe in the vaccination system. We do. We think you should wear masks absolutely everywhere, including in your car while you're driving, even if you're on your own. We don't. You know, those type of polarities lead to difficult conversations. And if you've had that or finding that, I'd be quite interested to see what your thoughts and experiences have been. But it's getting to a point now where it is such a sensitive subject that some people just dodge it. They just avoid the conversation altogether. They don't want to have the conversation. Or if they do want to have the conversation, they're afraid to have the conversation because of that polarity and the fact that it then creates a heated debate and unlike other discussions, maybe over whether the kids should wear certain types of shoes or what type of food they should eat or should they put a jumper on when they go outside or not, you know, you're going to have those kind of family different views on what one person's messy, the other person's not. You leave your socks here. I don't. When you come to our house, you do this. They're simple conversations to navigate. You can you can wind them out with comedy. You can wind them out with, oh, it's always been like that. Or you accept that's the other person, how they are. But not with this. We've never seen such polarity in the way people are reacting and how strongly they stand by their beliefs, particularly if somebody's gone down the route, for example, of, I don't know, vaccination, and then want to validate that by arguing for it. Equally, somebody that hasn't gone down the route of vaccination, and they will validate and argue for that as well. So you get this huge contrasting set of beliefs. And of course, because those beliefs are either underpinned by the social media space or the news or you know, what is seen as like, you know, the conspiratorial views. It's just leading to some really fascinating situations. And I want to talk into that space and say, if you're finding yourself there, just remember to come from a place of love, come from a place where this is your family. And I'm talking more about families, but of course it could be close friends. These are people that you've known for a long time. I mean, I'm hearing of celebrities dissing their part, their friends and saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to unfriend these people. I'm not going to talk to them. I'm not going to allow them into my space unless they, I don't know, vaccinate, unless they wear a mask or whatever. And, you know, the challenge with taking extreme views like that is it, it also plants seeds in other people's minds. So if we're seeing, I don't know, well-known celebrities or people that we may have previously had a respect for and seeing them act certain ways, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm saying it's the extreme of the reactions that can cause us to go, oh, oh my gosh, maybe I should do that. And so it's happening just on a, on a ground level inside families. 
this is our family. We love our family. We care for our family. So as much as we might have a belief that's different to someone else in the family, if you see beyond that, those differences have always been there. You know, we don't choose our family. We choose our friends. But we don't choose our family. We're born into our families. And so we have to decide. And yes, our values. And when I used to run my turning point events, we'd often find there's a huge clash of values and a misalignment of values between family members. And that's why so many people fall out or they have disagreements. But underlying all that is a blood connection, a love connection, a parent connection, all these things. And if you still have that same depth of connection with your family member and you love them to that extent, unless there's been other risks that cause breakups that for whatever reason aren't you know, reconcilable. If leading into COVID, actually things were pretty good and you know, there's a good connection internally with the family, don't allow this global pandemic and the way it's been handled and the way it's been managed and the way the communication has been handled and the way the media have portrayed it and the way the information has come across to us. Don't let any of those things come in the way of the fact that you have somebody you care about. And, um, you know, it's not my space to tell you what to do, but I have a view on these things. And as a speaker and as a teacher and somebody that goes out and shares a message, I think we have to go back to the core of who we are. At our core, we are human beings with a massive heart and a massive capacity to love. We're compassionate, we're understanding, we're empathetic. And I think we have to carry those things into the tiniest of moments in our lives to enable those around us to have the space to breathe. Because if there's tension coming from us and they're expecting and anticipating resistance and push and we're coming from our heads rather than our hearts, what they'll do is naturally put up a barrier. But what you can't wrestle with, what you can't fight is pure unadulterated, absolute, clear, unconditional love and total presence and being there when that person's sharing. So maybe, yes, you're in a conversation with somebody that really is polar opposite to you. Just look at them and remember that whatever they're feeling is set, based on a set of beliefs and how they see the world. It's based on how they've grown up, their experiences of the world, their perception of the world. Doesn't mean to say they're a bad person just mean to say they see things differently to you. And if you can hold that feeling about them and know that they're scared, they've got their own concerns and, and those fears might be greater than yours and to such an extent that they may have to just create a framework around them to make them feel safe. And, and so you come from a place of love and you just know that what you're doing here is looking to create a space where you can meet in the middle or meet somewhere and just talk about life. Now, that's not to say that I don't necessarily agree with people living in such fear that they should just lock themselves down and not do anything. I, I personally feel that there's a point in life where you have to weigh it up and say, you know, for example, if you're a grandparent um, or you're a parent of, of children that, of, of your children, or you, you know, you, if you've got children that got children you're a grandparent I grew up my father died when I was 13 years of age he was 46 years of age if I could rewind and relive some of those moments I'd spend more time with him I'd ask him to spend more time with us he was ill he wasn't necessarily capable of doing that but I'd find ways with the wisdom that I have today as a 55 year old and take that into my 13 12 year old 11 year old child as I was and find ways to squeeze those moments out and I guess what I'm saying to you if you're a parent or if you've got grandparents and maybe you want them to watch this is is it really worth living in that fear and what if something happens in the next 6 12 18 months of you choosing not to go and see your grandchildren or spend time with them because you're afraid to cross a border or you know what if i do this and what if i touch this you, you know you can cross the road and get run over statistically if you look at some of the statistics there are other illnesses and other things that could happen to you that ultimately may cause your demise and your your death if that's what you're afraid of whereas if you were to cross that boundary overcome that fear and protect yourself as what in whatever way you feel is appropriate and then put yourself in a position where you have that physical time with your grandchildren or your children those memories will never leave they will stay there and it may help you build your own strength i remember when i drove down to see my mom after lockdown and we hadn't seen her for a long time and 
you know, she was scared. She was scared of going out. She was very much afraid of going out and meeting people or somebody coming to the house. But when we finally got to the point where we were able to go down and we met her, oh my gosh, the emotions, the tears, the joy, the connection. My kids who are, you know, six and 12, 13, they were just over the moon because they had that physical contact. Our children desperately need it. I grew up into a family where because of her family fallout and a family feud with my grandmother, I actually didn't see my grandmother for literally decades before she passed away. So to some extent that leaves a scar on our souls and it leaves us with memories that will go through all the way to our adulthood. And then as parents, if we're not careful and haven't got the emotional development, we will then start to behave like that ourselves. And we don't want to be these distanced, removed, emotionally detached people. That's not how we've evolved as human beings. We've evolved as human beings to have a massive capacity to love and to connect. Is it really, is this fear so strong that you're prepared to give up all of those memories? Think about it. Some children have not seen, or some grandchildren have not seen their grandparents for maybe a year and a half, two years. I've been on an event this weekend where you know, one chap was saying that he, his, 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 he and his kids have not seen his parents for, I think it's like a year and a half, two years, because they hadn't seen them prior to lockdown. What does that do to the children? Take the opportunity, face your fears, and ask yourself sensibly, am I comfortable weighing this up and taking action to go and see the people around me that I care about? And again, that's just me saying, think about it. I can't tell you what to do. That's not my intention here. But I'm asking you to emotionally weigh the, the debt of that. And whether the fear is justified, if you really look at the statistics and, you know, are you protected and all those things, if you weigh all that up, is it just the fear of something that's really not tangible? It's like somebody that's not wanting to go to visit a friend because they don't like crossing the road. But there's several ways to cross a road. Yeah, but it's crossing the road, isn't it? Yeah, but there's several ways to cross the road. You could cross at the traffic lights. You could cross at the zebra crossing. You could have somebody walk you across. You could go over on a bridge. Yeah, but I know, but I'm just afraid of crossing the road. So sometimes we attach so much fear to a specific idea that we don't stop to step back and actually look at it objectively. And that's what I guess I want to say to you, apart from talking from my heart as well. Anyway, that was my reflection. And if it has any value to you, great. And if it doesn't, then that's fine as well. But I do believe that it's time to stop living in fear because this world if we carry on like this we pass that feeling of fear onto our kids and suddenly the language of covid and fear and masks and don't do this and do, 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 all those things become embedded in the psyche of our children and their experience of their memory of their parents their grandparents and the people they didn't see is not a loving one but one of well because of this i couldn't see them i couldn't hold i couldn't hug my granny and we have this innate desire to connect with our parents and our grandparents. We do. So I guess my message is for your children. Do, do whatever it takes and find a way to connect with them. It's Dr. Rowe signing out. hope that message helped.